Sean Devaney. I ain't talked to him a long time. Sean, what's good, my brother? Long time no speak, man. Uh, Bob, man, always good to hear from you, my friend. Yes, indeed. You are one of my favorite guys I have on the show, man. Your knowledge is very vast of the NBA. And yeah, as you know, Sean, and we were taught off the air, man, the Boston Celtics, man, are, they, they try to get their act together right now, potentially maybe, maybe playing the Hawks if the Hawks didn't have business. Did you ever think that losing a Ray John Rondo to the Bulls would make the difference in this series and make the Celtics kind of get their act together to seeing that guy go out with a thumb injury now? Just totally ironic, really, right? Because, you know, if you go back uh, three months and the Bulls would bet uh, Reg Rondo and basically say they didn't want him part of this uh, of their future, they were trying to trade him. They couldn't get anybody to uh, uh, to trade for him. Uh, now you fast forward a few months, and, and he's so valuable that when he's out, uh, they don't have a chance at a playoff series. So it's it's uh, it, it says a lot about the Bulls and the, what the way their season has been. It says a lot about Rondo and, and the way – sort of the later part of his career has gone. Uh, but it also says something about the Celtics, too. I think they needed a rallying point. I think uh, I, I think what happened with Isaiah Thomas was was one of those, and, and certainly with Rondo going out, I think that, that, that sort of uh, uh, gave them a renewed confidence. They've started to play a little more like we saw them play during the regular season. Now, Sean, has Rondo earned himself a spot on the Bulls roster next season? After, after this run, he's got them on because you think you have to bring the guy back. His contract is not that bad considering all things. So you have to think about bringing him back. But if he does not come back, can he make more money on the open market than he makes with the Bulls now and maybe more that roles to make when he gets signed this off this season as well? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's an $11 million question because they they, they owe they owe Rondo $14 million for next year. Uh, if they want to waive him, they have to do it by June 30th, and they still have to pay him three million. But but it gets them out of 11 million in terms of uh, what their commitments are. I think for the Bulls, uh, that consideration is going to come down to okay, do we know what Dwayne Wade is going to do because he can opt out of his contract, uh, and do we know what we're going to do with Jimmy Butler? Are we going to trade him, which they considered doing uh, multiple times in the past year? Uh, are we going to trade Jimmy Butler? If you're going to bring this whole group back. And you got to kind of bring the whole group back. You know, you know, if you're going to bring one or two back, then you should probably bring all three uh, and 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 see if you can gain some more consistency compared to what they had this past year. But if you're going to go rebuild, then you got to go all in on the rebuild, and and you got to hope that Wade opts out. You got to hope that you can trade Jimmy Butler. You got to hope that uh, uh, that, that that you waive Rondo. So it, it's really uh, one of two choices for the Bulls. I think that they go full on rebu- re- rebuild. Or they try to bring all three of these guys back, including Rondo. Uh, Sean, let's switch it over to the uh, Pacers after, uh, <clears throat> or the Cavs Pacers series, I should say, after sweeping the Pacers. Do you feel the Cavs have kind of righted their woes, or was the sweep just a byproduct of Indiana's inability to close games strongly with stops and scores down the stretch of these games? Yeah, I think I think you go with the second one on that. You know, you, you saw plenty of, you know, obviously you blow a 26 point lead. Uh, you know, Indiana really should not have lost that game. Obviously, uh, you go back to game one where they had a chance to to, to set up a good possession. Uh, uh, they had plenty of time to set up a good possession to win that game. Uh, they failed to do that. They wound up with the, a bad shot from C.J. Miles, and uh, you know, you can go through and, and and look at Indiana. They had plenty of opportunities to make this a very good series. I think the thing with Cleveland, the question that arose with them all year was, can they guard the pick and roll? And if you look at Indiana, you break down the numbers, and Indiana right now, uh, through four games of that series, compared to any other team, they they have the highest uh, points per possession on pick and roll plays. Uh, they they are the most efficient team in the playoffs. In other words, at running the pick and roll, that has been Cleveland's problem all year. And at the, what, what we saw against Indiana doesn't give any indication to me that they've solved that problem. It still looks like uh, the Cavaliers have the same problem defending that pick and roll. And that's going to be something that dogs them throughout the postseason. I still think they're better than any other team in the East, but if they can't figure that part out, then this postseason is going to be uh, a lot more interesting than they want it to be, that's for sure. Now, specifically to the Pacers off season. Uh, and Paul George, if you're the Pacers, do you start looking to trade Paul George as the draft comes closer? Because now it's somewhat common knowledge that he's <clears throat> looking to become a Laker or would like to become a Laker when that time arises, uh, or try to make moves that may entice him to stay next season. So are you, are you trying to keep Paul George by making moves, or are you just going to move him because he wants to be uh, out in the, on the West Coast? 
Well, I, I think they should try to move him. I, I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. I think he made it clear in subtle ways, the way he talked about teammates, the way he talked about that team uh, during the playoffs. Uh, he seemed to be a guy who was angling to get out of there uh, and angling to make it clear to the front office that, 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 that he wasn't, he wasn't going to come back uh, when, when his free agency comes, not this summer, but next summer. But, but at this point, you know, if you're going to make a move on him, you got to do it now. And I think with the draft projected to be as good as it is projected to be, I think now's the time you make a move. You look at the guy that you've got, Miles Turner, uh, in the in the front court, and you say, okay, let's build a you know another guy around him if we can get two picks, uh, or if we can get another pick of a young guy, uh, wh- whatever it is. Let's 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 find a way uh, to rebuild around Miles Turner rather than you know trying to cling to this notion that that Paul George. Uh, that we're going to do enough to make Paul George stay. The problem is I think Larry Bird is probably near the end of the line in terms of how long he wants to stay in Indiana. Uh, and, and so I don't know that he has the stomach for a rebuild. I think that he would like to see them get good as quick as they can, try to get in the playoffs and be relevant again uh, as, as, as quickly as possible. So I think the right thing for them to do is to rebuild, uh, but I don't know that, that Larry Bird really has the stomach for that right now. Now, now, Sean, from the Boston perspective, uh, looking at how they uh, were handled before the Rondo injury, should should Danny Ainge had, uh, try to make a move for Paul George or Jimmy Butler at the deadline to give them another solid scoring option outside of Isaiah Thomas? Yeah, they, they did, and they, they really did. And you know what? What they found that both what uh, Chicago and Indiana was asking for was too much. Uh, and that, you know, if, if they had made those moves, they weren't necessarily going to be a championship team. I think Danny Ainge is playing the long game with the Celtics, and that is, uh, look, you know, LeBron is, is I believe, he's 32. He's going to be 33 uh, at the uh, end, of, uh, end of December. Uh, and so, you know, let's, let's be patient. Let's wait for LeBron to get a little bit older and a little more vulnerable in, in the process. And then as you do that, as you build up your young guys, uh, then you're in a much better position to take advantage of Cleveland's weaknesses. Uh, and, because I think everybody knows that when LeBron, even at this, at this point, at 32 years old, when he puts his mind to it, he's going to beat you. And there's nobody in the East right now who can beat a LeBron James team. Uh, and, and I think the, the, that Danny Ainge is well aware of that. So, you know, you, you, you could have traded for Jimmy Butler but you probably weren't going to go to the finals. You know, that wasn't going to be enough to get you past uh, LeBron James and the Cavaliers. I think Danny H knew that. And so, you know, it's, it's easy to say that, that, that you should have done this, you should have done that. But I think that, that, that he's had in mind all along that they want to be a championship team, uh, and they're probably still a couple of years away from that. And we're joined by Sean Dickney here on the Boston Man Show for Sporting News. NBA, a great one at that. Now, speaking of the Washington Wizards, who I've had the pleasure of seeing the last uh, five nights, uh, they may move the deadline, Sean, to supposedly boost their bench and then also in the bio market to Brandon Jennings. Uh, looks like they're only playing seven and a half guys at best that can really play. Now, if they were to get by the Hawks and play the Celtics or they beat Chicago or the Cleveland, how can they really compete with pretty playing seven and a half guys with Wall and Bill, a lot of these men getting tired? So, do you feel like the Ernie Grunfield, you know, should have a better job of building that bench? And I know Yama Hemi's hurt too, but I feel like they don't have anybody to go to outside Wall, Bill, yeah. Morris, and go outside. I mean, you look at last night, right? And and Calderon was what he was like plus twenty nine uh, in the in terms of plus minus off the bench for the Hawks, uh, and you had Ilyasova, uh, and 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 then they're making all these guys look like they're six men of the year. Uh, Kent Bazemore, uh, you know, I, and and you know, it's not just uh, on on the offensive end that they can't that they can't score, it's on the defensive end. They are not stopping anybody. So that bench for Washington, uh, which, like you said, what, that was one of the good things that – and down the stretch they played well. You know, it, you know through March and then into April, those guys played well. Uh, it, it looked like Ernie Grunfeld had done a good job rebuilding that bench. You get to the playoffs and all of these guys have, have kind of – uh, you know, reverted to the mid that they've all reverted to uh, what they were before the trade deadline, and uh, so yeah, it's it's I'm, I'm sure it's very very frustrating for Scott Brooks and and, and for Ernie Gruff, Grunfeld in terms of how that fence is played, um, and you know it's that it, they've been much better at home than they have on the road, and I hope that uh, I'm sure they're hoping that uh, uh, that 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 when they go back to Washington they'll 
they'll, they'll refine their groove. But but that's got to be a real concern that that you uh, you, you know you rebuilt this bench and, uh, and and it has completely let you down in the two games in Atlanta. Now, Sean, uh, Hawks owner Tony Wrestler has come out, said that they'll do anything to keep Paul Millsap, and they're in the Paul Millsap business. Do you really see them maxing out a 32, 32-year-old Millsap at over, what, likely $200 million? And, and outside of Millsap, who are some free agents on the roster now that you see the Hawks uh, trying to keep? Well, you know, I, I think they wind up trying to keep pretty much everybody. Once you got past, uh, January 7th, I think it was, was when they traded Corver, and it looked like they were going to go into free agent, uh, go, going to go into rebuilding mode. And, and, and to me, I thought that was the right decision. I thought that when you look at the number of guys that they had who were, who were getting into their 30s and were, and were going to be free agents, and, and uh, you, you know, it, it looked like the time where, okay, maybe it's time to, to turn over this roster and, and, and to start fresh with some young guys. Uh, you know, rather than doing that, you know, they, they make the core of a trade and then they kind of pulled off of all of that. Uh, and I think once you make that decision that, okay, we're not going to go in that direction. You got to commit to that. And part of committing to that is saying, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going with Paul Millsap all the way here, even if that means, you know, you know, that it's going to be a, uh, you know, a four year deal that, that, that takes him until he's, uh, until he's 36. And, you know, I, I'm not sure that's the soundest decision for the franchise, uh, but I'm sure that they're looking at it like, well, if we could have traded for him this year, uh, that, that then we could probably find a deal for him next year or the year after that, if we decide, uh, again, to, uh, uh, to, to make some changes. So, you know, I, I, I really think that, that the right thing for them to do would have been to start, you know, cutting off some of these assets and sending them elsewhere. Uh, but, you know, you've already seen them, them bring along some young guys like Torian Prince and, and Hardaway, guys like that. Uh, so, so they are acknowledging the fact that they need to get younger. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you, you know, they're, it, it seems to me that they've, they've pretty much committed to some of the uh, uh, some of the older guys that they've got on their roster. Sean, for me, it's just shocking seeing, knowing the Hawks the way I've known them all these years for being cheap. And, you know, even with maybe made a cheap move by trading Mike Scott to Phoenix to do a um, dump for salary. So I'm like, the, you know, he, I can like, are you serious, Mr. Wrestler? You're looking to pay this man when you traded Mike Scott just a uh, salary dump yeah. at the deadline. It, this makes me not – I. Knowing the Hawks the way I do, knowing how they used to just do so much penny pension moves, I know it's not that the same ownership group like it used to be, but it's like I can't just still make the Hawks actually doing this, Sean. I can't do it. Well, I mean, they paid Cap Baysmore, and you could argue that that was a really dumb move. You know, if you're going to no, pay yeah, anybody, then that, that was. You know, kids might yeah, right. a bad move. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 I, and I like Baysmore, but, you know, I mean, the, the amount that they paid him, I mean, let somebody else make that mistake. Don't make that mistake yourself. And obviously, they've been better since they uh, moved him to the bench. So, yeah, I mean, it's you know, it, it's always hard to figure out with with teams, you know, what they value and when they value it. Uh, and it's been especially hard with the Hawks. Obviously, we've seen as much as they've gone through in terms of their ownership and their front office. Uh, there hasn't been a clear direction uh, from, from from anybody really uh, in the last two years, I, and that's got to be very frustrating. Uh, but you know, I mean, that's 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 sort of the situation that they're in, uh, and 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 so it does seem uh, that that some of the moves that they make are you know a little random and and you know it's it, it's not always clear exactly what the plan is and, and and where they're going like i said in january it seemed like they're ready to rebuild i think if you're going to make that 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 uh a part of where you're going you stick with it i don't i don't think you just you, you know you you don't let a five game winning streak change the fact that uh that, that you're looking at rebuilding and and that you're getting old uh, you know and that's that seems to be uh, uh sort of uh um, the, the like I said, the lack of direction. You see that effect in terms of decisions like that. Sean, I, I feared the Hawks going back to when I first started covering the team in '06 when they was terribly bad. When they was going to the arena, they was going to the there. When they had the, the old the old hawk on the floor. I remember those days yeah. of 2006. I remember how bad it was. It's heading back that way, but I don't know. They don't want to admit it, but it is because you you pushed off the rebuild some years because you won some few, a few games in a row, you know. <laughs> so I feel that's coming down the road in two or three years. I'm gonna he'll be back to enjoying the Hall games being empty, nobody there, giving away tickets. No, yeah, <laughs> right. But don't, don't you think don't you think that's part of the decision making though? Is that is that there has been enthusiasm there, and there has been like these playoff games have been. Well attended and 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 heard a lot. I mean, they, you, they haven't been rooting for the other team as we've seen in the past. 
And I think that there's part part of that the, the thinking that goes into that is you know we want to keep that going. I don't think it's the right thing long term for the franchise, but I can understand why they wanted to do that. You know, you know, to kind of keep that enthusiasm going uh, because you know if, if if you lose that, it's hard to get it back. You're right about that. It's, it, it's definitely hard to make fans of ATL come out and support you because a lot, okay, as you know, a lot of things come to cheer for the other team. A lot of times now, it's been more let's go Hawks, a lot of Hawks, Hawks here being some worn around. So, yeah, you're right about that. I guess they don't want to lose that momentum they built here in Atlanta. You know, I, mm-hmm. I guess they don't want to keep that step going. I, I can see what you're talking about there, but I know business-wise, basketball-wise, it doesn't make sense. But for us, the turnstiles making make that bottom line money, yeah. I, I got you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, right. And then, and again, you know, I mean, it's it's easy for us to say they should do this, they should do that, but we're not the ones who are counting the money in the end. We're not the ones who have to pay the bills, and they, and they are. <laughs> exactly. And the final one for you, Sean, is this, man. I, I noticed this season, we're in the playoffs, and no coach has been fired. The surprise firing has not came yet, knock on wood, on jinxing his body. But you're here in a season where there's been no coaching changes made throughout the whole year. And what has caused it this year, where the carousel has been kind of quiet this year, with nobody being fired or let go because of performance right now? I mean, I've I've been doing this for 15 years, and I can't remember going a whole year without a coaching change. I mean, this is it's pretty remarkable. The one coaching change we might see is, you know, we might not not see Steve Kerr back uh, just because of what he's going through physically, uh, and and that obviously would be too bad. But uh, you know, when you look at what's happening uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, since last summer. When, when, when all the when all the last spring really when when all the uh, coaching hires were made, uh, you've got you've got a whole bunch of guys who are who are, are pretty safe it seems. Um, you know the ones that 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 would seem to be the most susceptible uh, guys like Alvin Gentry or or, or Jeff Hornacek. Uh, you know it, it seems like they might have been enough to save their jobs or maybe the 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 ownership is just so tired of of uh, a carousel of coaches that they don't want to do that right now. Uh, but right now, it doesn't seem like anybody uh, is 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 really in danger of losing their jobs, and that that that's pretty shocking to me. That's something that, like I said, I've not seen in uh, 15 years of doing this job. Yeah, I mean, I looked at it, I'm like, nobody's been fired yet. Like, nobody's like, I've, I've, I've been waiting on it, but I, I figured Dwayne Casey, if he beats the Bucks, he'll be okay. You know, Nate McMillan, I thought he should be the coach of the Pacers, but he should be back. He's on the contract for next year. So it's like, you know, mm-hmm. every, it, it seems like every, every, everybody's job is pretty much secure because they either hired somebody last year or they put them in the position. They got one of games to get in the playoffs. So I guess next year we have a big case for next year then with Alvin Gentry when that, that, that experiment fails. You know, we want to say Frank is put that about field accident to blame somebody for their losses. So I think that'll come next year probably. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We might see a bloodbath at this time next year. There might be there might be ten coaches fired at this time next year. But I will say if we if we get through the next couple months with no coaches fired, uh I will say that I, I've never seen anything that calm uh in in terms of the coaching world uh uh in, certainly not in the last 15 years and and I I I'm pretty sure if you if you look into it you won't find uh, uh you won't find anything like that really in in, in quite a long time I hear you. Hey, Sean, thank you for your time. Always my brother. Hopefully that the Celtics and Hawks do their job. We can come down and we can see each other, man. Hang out for a minute, man. Enjoy the season of the ACL, man. Hopefully the Rose won't collapse while you're here. How much we going to collapse the Rose while you, when you come down? So hopefully we'll let that go on. We can hang out a little bit, man. You come down, man. That sounds great, man. I look forward to that. All right, folks. It's Sean Devin here on the Boss, man. So come to the Mills after the break. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B L U B E R R Y, prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service.
Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft. Whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft, Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. He's here with us for the Indiana Hoosiers, new head coach up there out of the Big Ten Conference. It's Coach Tom Allen. Coach Allen, how are things for you up there in Bloomington, man? Oh, man, we're doing great. Had an awesome spring, and now we're in the, the eval period for recruiting, so it's uh, going well. And, Coach, uh, being named the head coach of the Hoosiers now, what does it mean to you to get this coaching job with this big-time program in the Big Ten coach to put you a stamp on the university and the community of Bloomington in Indiana? Well, it means an awful lot to me. You know, I was born and raised in this state, and, and this is obviously home. And just so many people that I know here, so many high school coaches. I was a, a high school coach in the state for 10 years before I made the jump to college. And just so, just means so much to be able to represent my home state and uh, to be able to have the opportunity to lead the Hoosiers is a, a dream opportunity for sure. And coach, uh, being from the Indiana coaches, I know it's a big basketball state, but how big is it for mm-hmm. football as well? Is it the same kind of vigor for his football as his basketball coach? Well, there's no uh, denying the fact that uh, when you think of Indiana, you think of basketball. And, and I understand that, you know, you know, being here my whole life and, and uh, I'm a huge basketball fan myself, you know, and just, uh, you kind of are raised that way here and watching it. And, and so, uh, that's, that's something that uh, isn't going to change. And, and I'm okay with that. But what I do, what I have seen, you know, Indiana high school football has really improved the last 10, 15 years and uh, has done a great job of putting out a, a lot of really good players that went across the country. And so our challenge is to keep those really good players and keep them home, you know. So, but uh, when you look at what Coach Mallory did many years ago and 
and the way that he won here consistently and, and the 12 years that he spent here. So we just want to be able to get back to the point where we're, we're uh, consistently going to bowl games like we have the last two years and, and raise a level of, uh, of interest and, and love and passion for this great game here in Indiana. And it's something that's definitely happening uh, each and every year. And so we're excited to build off that uh, momentum that we have right now. And coach, looking at you guys' location, it looks like you can you can go pretty much the Midwest. You can even go out east. You can go out west, southwest. It looks like you're in a good spot, kind of been located, kind of in the middle of the country. We kind of hit every angle you want to hit to in a few hours or so, or fly out if you have to. Go out way out west or way up east. Yeah, we can, and that's really an advantage for us. And we're the southernmost uh, Big Ten university, and so we we dip into the south and they're able to uh, recruit down there. Uh, we were able to go, like you said, out east and. I snagged a few guys from there. I have had some kids all the way from California. Uh, Texas has been an area that we've recruited as well. And so um, just uh, um, we're a national university, world-class education you can get here. And, and so we have a pretty uh, pretty strong brand feel across this country. It allows us to, to, to reach into different regions and pull student-athletes uh, from those spots and, and uh, allow them to be able to fulfill the dreams that they have and, and what they want to accomplish professionally. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, great, great opportunity here at IU. And coach, how much content you have the goats maybe to get them to help you guys out for you know evaluating how your practices or getting to go watch them practice or what have you? Because I feel like when you have the pro team in the area, kind of help the state school or the schools in the area, it kind of makes the state better all the way around. So do you all have that relationship with the coach where they help you guys out and let you all come down and kind of see how they did the things and get some ideas from help help bring back to your program? You know, absolutely. You know, I uh, um, saw that firsthand when I was at the University of South Florida. Uh, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we spent time with their staff. We go watch them practice and meet with their coaches. And so really want to do the same thing here. And I know our coaches have been able to do that. They're only an hour away up in Indianapolis to be able to watch the Colts and watch their OTAs. And you know, it's hard to do it during the season, but in the off season, we're able to do things like that. And I know that I've actually spent the last couple weekends here going up to the Colts facility and speaking at events up there. And so just uh, as you said, and I think that's been a big part of the growth of Indiana high school football has been, uh, when the Colts came to town and, and what they brought to the community and the emphasis on football and then what the uh, Ursay family has given back to that community and to our entire state has been um, a big part of the growth of, of football in Indiana. Folks, we're joined by Tom Allen here in the end, who's here on the Boss Man Show. And, Coach, uh, for you, you personally, Coach, what's been the biggest adjustment for you going from the defensive coordinator to being the head coach? Now, I know you got to go a lot of more meetings, you got to talk to a lot more boosters, mm-hmm. a lot more people. But how's it just been yeah. for having being, being the, the face of the, of the whole football program in Indiana now going forward? You know, that is that is the big difference you just mentioned, you know, the, the times you have to go out and speak and – you know, meet with alumni and boosters and, and uh, be able to connect with them, which is very important. And I actually enjoy that, uh, but it takes time to do that. You know, so you get, you get pulled away from the office more and you have interviews and just a lot more meetings and things you have to do to organize and plan. But, but uh, outside of that, you know, there's a lot of similarities, you know, and uh, being able to connect with your players and, and get your coaches all aligned on the same page, you know, it's kind of a, the same thing I was doing on the defensive side of the ball and now just doing them with the entire team and the entire staff. So, uh, a lot of carryover for sure, but obviously uh, there's just demands and certain things that the head coach has to do that other assistants don't, and, and that's just part of it. And uh, you know, I enjoy a lot of that as well. And so it's been a, it's been a pretty smooth transition. And it's been a great opportunity. And coach, who are some coaches that really had an impact on you personally, and professionally, to get you to this point you are, and that you kind of draw from as you are going your journey as the head coach here? The next how many years you're there, hopefully for a long time. But who are some guys mm-hmm. who really affected you in a positive way to make you get you to the point you are today, coach? Well, you know, from a professional perspective, you know, Dick Dollahan was a, a longtime high school coach in this in this state. I worked with him for 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 nine years there at Ben Davis and and uh, just learned so much from him he coached in in, in the Big Ten and, and at Army as well in his past and so he was a big influence and then I had a chance to work with Chris Creighton now the current head coach at Eastern Michigan was hit with him a couple different spots and in, in in college and uh, so much respect for him and then Hugh Freeze down at Ole Miss is a guy that I've been with at at, at three different places including Ole Miss and, and learned a lot from him and and then also Willie Taggart's the guy that I worked for here most recently he's now at Oregon he hired me at South Florida and I was a D coordinator. And so um, just those, those head coaches in college and coach D in high school. And then ultimately my dad was my high school coach and, and had a huge influence on my life. And not just as a, as a coach, but as a man and developing the things that, that we valued as a family. And so just so thankful and, and grateful for all these men that, that God has put in my life to allow me to, to learn from and grow from. 
I hear, hear that, Coach. And it's, it's, it's hearing you talk here, Coach, and I know that you know you're going to get a lot of guys to buy into what you're, you're buy into your system, buy into your program. Mm-hmm. So, just in, in particular, Coach, what kind of guys do you want to bring into your program for going forward to become a Hoosier and to have the Hoosier way about them? So, who, like, do you want a, a guy with a high character or a high motor? Do you want a, a, a guy mm-hmm. maybe he's a little rough around the edges, but you kind of mold him into a better man and making a better person, a better father, a better husband, a better worker? So, mm-hmm. what kind of guys are you looking for bringing into your program, Coach? Well, first and foremost, you know, we want high character guys that have a huge passion to want to get world-class education, uh, love to work, love to compete, and want to represent our university in a first-class way. So to me, that's the job of our coaches is to find those special young men that to have the courage and confidence to, to take a stand and do the right things um, on and off the field. You know, when you get on college campuses, there's a lot of temptations, a lot of things going on, a lot of distractions that you can get pulled into. And, and so finding guys with that uh, – high amount of character that, that do uh, care about school and, and want to do uh, the right things. And to me, that's, that's really what we're all about here. You know, yeah, we, we're going to play football at the highest level in the Big Ten, and you're going to get an awesome education here, and, and you're going to be challenged to become the man that I believe you were created to be. And we take that personally. Our challenge and our charge to our coaches is to capture the hearts and minds of our players, and we do that through investing in them and, and loving them way beyond the game of football. So it's a tremendous opportunity, tremendous challenge, but it's going to take a special young man that we got to go out and, and comb the country from to find a guy that wants to come here and help us make history about you. I hear that, Coach. And, and Coach, this is spring, Coach. Who are some guys who you want to kind of highlight who had great springs? You're looking forward to having a, a great fall camp as well and helping you guys on the field this upcoming season, Coach? Well, a guy that really jumps out to me is Ian Thomas. He's one of our tight ends that uh, really had a great spring. I feel like that he is a guy that a lot of people won't know about, but I know that he's got a high ceiling for us and, and uh, really excited about his growth and development. Taysier Mack, another receiver uh, that really had a, a, just kind of one of a coming out spring for us and, and a, tr- a true freshman here this past fall and excited about his future. You know, our quarterback, uh, Richard Lego, had a great spring, really excited about his development and growth as both a leader and as a player. You know, defensively, you know, Greg Gooch is a guy that uh, uh, many may, may know, but not as much about, just really emerged as a tremendous leader for us and, and uh, just a high energy, high motor guy that, that loved what he brought every single day. You know, everyone knows about T. Gray Scales and Richard Fan. They're excellent players that are going to continue to do that. But I think those guys, to me, uh, did what they were expected to do this spring and elevated their game on and off the field. And then I think uh, a kid like Khalil Bryant that uh, ended up getting our most valuable player of the spring award, uh, true freshman that came in here and really kind of blossomed this spring. So there's just a few guys that I think really uh, you know, caught my attention this spring. And, and I thought we had a tremendous uh, 15 days together on the field and really, really pleased with the progress we're making here. And coach, as far as uh, your guys, what you've been a new coach, are you allowed to get them in, in film room a little bit more outside, outside the field? With the, the rules allow you to do that in the summertime as well, get them in the film room, in the dark room, kind of get them get to study more of the playbook, or you kind of got to let them, let them go. You can't really talk to them after the semester ends. Well, they give us some time. Once we get here in June and July, you really can't do anything with them in May. You know, right now they're focusing on their final exams at this current time, and then they'll they'll have a chance to get away a little bit in the month of May. And and uh, so, but when we come back in June, you know, we'll, the rules allow us a, a limited amount of time. You can either use it to be able to have the meetings in your classroom or some meetings out on the field. And so, you know, we we choose to use that in the classroom, and and uh, it ends up being you know maybe about an hour a week. You know, be able a chance to to do those kind of things with them. So it's not a lot of time but it does give us some time that they've opened that up to us here in the last few years. And so we want to take advantage of that. But a lot of time it's got to be your, your players really being trained by their coaches to lead each other during this time of the year. And, and you have player led practices that you'll rely on those guys to be able to do and you know, work on the fundamentals and work on the, the things that we want to implement over the summer to reinforce from spring. So I think that's a great thing because it forces us to, to get our players to, to lead one another, hold each other accountable and uh, learn to work together because what's what they have to do out there on the field when the coaches are on the sideline. And coaches, I was talking about the, the Pacers off the air, coach. And the coach, and I, I was up to get a game three. And I was up there on the twelfth as well when, when the Hawks played up there. And I know my buddy Jeff Teague is on, on the team now. Do you feel like the Pacers are going <laughs> to keep, uh, keep him uh, next year? Do you think they should going to keep Paul George, keep all the, the band together, and try one more time? Or they going to try to break it on up, coach? I, I, well, tell me your, your gut feel about it, man. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a basketball expert. You know, obviously I want to see him do well and, and a huge uh, fan of the Pacers. And, 
their whole organization. They've been so good to me and so good to us. And, and so I, I love to see them keep them together. You know, I think Paul George is an excellent player. And, and Jeff T is a local kid there playing in Indianapolis at high school. And, you know, so I, I would love to see them. You know, obviously those aren't my decisions and all that. But uh, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of strength and continuity. And uh, but at the same time, I know it sometimes we're at that level where they sometimes if things you know get to a certain point, they end up breaking it up and kind of starting over. So I'm not sure the direction it's going to go, but I, I would prefer that they keep it together. I hear that, coach. And coach, before you go, now, coach, you can't show us, coach, what a typical day like is for you, coach. When you get to the office, like, are you watching the film? Are you are you talking to to your coaches? So, how's a typical day like for you, coach, in season when, when you're trying to get ready for a game week? Yeah, in season, you know, you, you basically come in you know, bright and early. And uh, to me, we're morning practice team. So we do a great job of getting everything ready the, the day before. So we'll come in and we'll have meetings right away with our player starts with special teams. And then we get into our position meetings and, you know, watching film from the night before and some different things that we want to install for that day. And, and then we'll go out and we'll practice. And uh, and then we'll be able to do a great job of, of uh, having a ton of energy on that practice. And then we'll come back in afterwards and, and uh, grab grab a bite to eat as we go and meet together as a staff and start grading that practice and go through every single play and get all the corrections down and then go through and start game planning the scheme and based on day of the week that it is and whatever we're emphasizing for that next practice, whether it's working on third downs or red zone or you know normal downs or whatever the, the sequence would be. And then we go through and, and start script and practice with our you know, all our coaches and drawing cards and getting everything sequenced and in order for that next practice and and we put bring our players back in the evening and have them have about a 30 minute meeting, you know, where they're able to go through and watch the, the practice from the morning and then go eat together as a, as a, as a team and, and then come back and, and just make sure everything's polished up for that next morning practice. But like, our goal is when we leave that night, and obviously in early in the week, it's, it's really late. Uh, and as, as the week progresses, you like to get out of there a little bit sooner so you can get, uh, get your body right. So you can have the, the energy you need to be coaching at the highest level on, on Saturdays. But, uh, um, we're able to make sure everything we do is is all completed before you leave in the evening, and then obviously mixed in there's recruiting calls. You have to make a consistent basis your guys you're trying to to, to stay on and, and and actively and aggressively recruit during the season. So pretty uh, full day for us. Not a whole lot of we're in there. We come back the next morning, do it all over again. You know, so it's a. Uh, Long days and short nights, but that's part of the deal. I hear that, Coach. I'll tell you what, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, and I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to seeing you guys do well this year, Coach. And I hope you get to play a game close to where I'm at, because I know I do lots of Tennessee. I do lots of Kentucky as well. So hopefully if it's a weekend, I'm right. close. I'll try to get up there and see you guys play, man. That sounds awesome, man. we sure love to have you and love to meet you face-to-face. It's been a pleasure. Yes, sir, folks. That's Tom Allen here on the Boss Man Show. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. 
that they be having from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind, ENT. Believe in it. Get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you.
And then when he said, we bros, I mean, I'm over here like, uh, hello, I, I am a female here. Hello, all woman, 100% bros. <laughs> exactly. Like, for real. Okay. And then I don't even know what this person wants, what the email is about, <laughs> what they actually, what they're even trying to say here. Talk about hell yes, indeed, you better know it. No, I don't know anything because I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're emailing about. Are you looking for advice? Are you telling us how your day went? If you are telling us how your day went, I don't know what's going on because you just went from you tipped your coach over there. You talk about slots. You talk about baseball and Netflix? What's going on? <laughs> that's a lot of stuff going on in one email. A lot of stuff going on in that email that's bad. Like, what? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, next. Listener email. Jeremiah's and Cliche Wilson. Okay. What? I'm juggling at work. Shucks. You that money stuff. I ain't getting a lot of it, man. Beehive, small being, support, sex, wife, and woman. I be popping money stuff and getting to me. I need some of the donuts. Piss gotta stop. Make a change or choice with the cake or something. Shucks. Whatever. I need it. 18 in the hood. Holla. 18 in the hood. Why are you, quote, juggling at work, my man? Are, are you are you a circus clown? I mean, my man, are you like a, a magic trick guy? I don't know what you're talking about. And first of all, Gerald Myers and Cliche Wilson. Who in the hell are you talking about, man? What? And did I ever announce, quote, I'm here with Cliche Wilson? And, I, and I'm Gerald Myers or whatever the I was maybe a cuss, and I shouldn't do that like that. I was, see, see, AT, my baby said where I should say on the radio. See, you about caught me a fine. See, AT, how mad you making me, AT. I mean, shucks, you ain't the money stuff. Uh, okay. I ain't getting a lot of, I, I, you, my man. With your intelligence, why should you even have a job, my man? With your intelligence. Small bean support, sex wife. What is that? What is that? <laughs> I need some of the donuts. The dummy you talking about the wheel of a car? Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme, the powdered ones? What you mean, my man? Yes! Piss gotta stop, man. Your email gotta stop, my man. <laughs> Terrible. Yes, make a change in your choice. Yes, better emails. Get a cake or something. Make a better choice. Get a better mind. Emails. Go to your local community college. Enroll there. Try to learn some, my man, because right now, you know nothing. That's what it is. That's what you need. Now you holler. 18 hood. What hood? What's the new hood, my man? Where you at? Are you in Canada? You in France? You in America? Dominican Republic? Cuba? Where you at, my man? Talk to us. I can't help you. I don't know where the hell you at. Damn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 18 in the new hood. <laughs> Learning is so fundamental, my guy. Uh, yeah, there's no cliche Wilson or Jeremiah. Yeah, I don't know who they are. <laughs> And I mean, if you're juggling at work, bro, you you need to find you something to do. I don't know why you're juggling at work. Normal people <laughs> don't. So, and beehive, small being support. You mean child support? What do you mean small being? Why are people trying to make things more difficult than it was already is? Exactly. Kids or child. Uh, spot, whatever. Quit making stuff more difficult. Like, these elongated ways to say crap. Just say it. <laughs> Just whatever your take is, spit it out and get to it. I don't really need all these long, elongated takes that you have, people. Get to your point. Okay. Please. Yeah, like, next time don't call a child a small being. Just call it a, what, a child or a kid or something. Come on, man. <laughs> Jesus. Piss gotta stop. I don't even know what that even means. Piss gotta stop. I, I've never... What? <laughs> Maybe it's a bad bladder or something. Who knows? I don't know what's going on, but AT in the new hood, yes, definitely get your mind right. You need to get your life together because you got too, way too much going on. doesn't seem like you have a good job or anything. So, yes, you need to get you education, get you a better job, and improve your lifestyle. Amen. Please. Listener email. Hakeem Gerond and Monique Barnwood. Wow. 
Oh gosh. And the email's even worse. Tam Yam and a dark purple place. I'm going to several state services. I've met a fine light skin thing. C got a butt, breast, and body. Analyzing Alabama and other slots. I wonder how is a thing like gang with South Man. After event services and night, it mouth. The mouth melts and emits fluffy fry dry fluid that harms natural smoke. <laughs> Just, just a breath, my man, a breath. I love that crap, a breath. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. We just referenced this email ago. It's simple, her breath stink. That's all it is. Whether in nature, <laughs> and this person's continuing too. Whether in nature or interior, it appears. I apologize for the personal nature of email. I am in need of advice from you. How do I tell saying that mouth is rotten and, and to improve while retaining its services? Thanks, Kevin. It's in the Bond Kitchen. <laughs> My man. <laughs> All that tell me her breath stink. All that. Look. Tell her, okay. We referenced this up for about, well, last show, I think, about the breath. Mentos. Uh, peppermints. Uh, brush your teeth. Mouthwash, you know, give subtle hints about this before you adjust the my man. That's how you, you want to quote retaining services. Well, I mean, what do you mean you want to detain the sexual papers you get from it? I mean, come on, like my man. Your email was all about was this re- a lot of a lot of nothing. Let's get to the, get to your point. The chick breath stink. How I'll tell a boss how to fix this? How do I do it without losing what I got with her? Making them mad at me. It's that simple, Jay. I mean, like, these people are making it hard enough to be. Get to your damn point, my man. And the, it emits fluffy, fried, dry fluid at home. That's what that smells. That's just a, a, a bad breath. How toast is Come on. What the hell is all these elongated nonsense you're speaking to me? Why? Keep it simple. Keep K I S. Keep it simple, sir. Kiss. Keep it simple, sir. Or I'm going to ask you what your deal is. Damn, man. I can't. And why is he calling the woman a man, thing? What is up with that? Why are, quote, guys calling like women, quote, things? Man? What is up with this? Did I miss this memo, Jay, that women are things? Yeah. Oh, you didn't. I'm just this. I'm just a thrown back as you are because it's not like he just keeps on calling her thing all about the theme. I don't like tell things. And then what is fluffy, fried, dry, lit, fluid? Apologize for emailing the show, period. Oh my god. I apologize for the first time. I should apologize for emailing the show, period. She also should apologize for Well, I should never email this man again. She should apologize to me and Jay for having to read your crap. Apologize for that. I mean, exactly. Kevin at Cinnabon Kitchen, my man. New job, please. You shouldn't have spotted work at Cinnabon Kitchen. Well, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason why he's at Cinnabon Kitchen. I mean, look at this email. First of all, you want some advice? Okay, first of all, reading and spelling is so fundamental in life. It's not even funny. And it's like the basic words that you should be spelling correctly are not spelled correctly at all. I mean, a five-year-old spells better than this. So uh, get your mind right, sir, mister. (laughs) Please. And I mean, seriously. And then keep it simple. Come on. There's no reason to be putting all this difficult stuff in here. A woman is not a thing. Don't, don't call a woman things. And, I mean, if, you know, her breath smells bad, then just either tell her or, you know, just politely or a piece of gum or a Tic Tac or something. It's not that serious, bro. There you go. That's all it takes, my man. It's in the barn kitchen. Damn. Listener email. Julio and Juanita. How much would cost intern with y'all? I'm out of gel. I need to get a new smear. I'd like to box. I'd like to box with you all. Life is new. Sports could be cool. Help me give my woman a ring. You are moneyed up. I know. Francisco and Louisiana. No. No. And no. <laughs> no. 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 And no. Uh, intern here never got out of jail. You're not qualified. 
That's the box game box for nothing to me, brother. Sports is cool. You want me, you know, you know get, get her a ring for fun. Get her a ring pop, my man. And, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I money it up. What does that mean, my man? Does, I mean, what do you mean by that? I money it up. I mean, my man, I don't know what that means. You don't know nothing, my man. Just hopefully you don't go back on papers. Get her a ring pop and find you a job elsewhere, my man, that hires felons or in between offenders. But you ain't gonna get a job here, my man. Sorry. Exactly. Francisco, nobody here is named Julio or Juanita. And just for the record, jail? It's not spelled J E L L. Let's get that. Get out of jail. Where's jail? <laughs> exactly. My man, please. And can you please tell me what is a new smear? Can somebody please tell me this? Because I don't know what a new smear is. They smear crap on the pants is of a pants or something. I don't know. I mean, a new smear. Need, need a new diaper, my man? What the hell? Oh, my God. So the only smear I know of is a pap smear, and I'm I quite sure you don't need I, that. I, I would I hope. hope. <laughs> <laughs> if he did, he got more problems than what I think he had already. Oh gosh, and I'd like to box with y'all. With you all, what do you mean box? I mean, this is not a fight club, man. This is not the. This is not a fight okay. club. Okay. Rest my man, please get to my right before you be back in quote jail, J E L L, whatever the hell that is. Jail. Okay. Life is new, sir. I hope it is <laughs> in a good way. I hope new means by you get some knowledge, my man. Knowledge is power. Power. Knowledge. Exactly. Keep it simple, sir. Or also ask yourself, when you do when you do something, what will a boss will take to be on my actions? They ask me what my deal is. That should help you out of life, my man. Those questions. What's my deal? And what will be bosses take on what I'm doing? Did that might help you, Francisco, Louisiana, please. My man, get get your mind. Yeah, that's true. For you, Mother Please. Please. <laughs> please. Please, like my man Uncle Luke. Uh oh. In South Beach. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Listener email Otto Howard and Bella Nicole. What? I'm aware this is. <laughs> I'm aware this is a sports show, but F it. My wife has pissed me off, and I can't take it no more. I like her natural, no enhancements or weird cream stuff that women put on. I hate lipstick, masks, and eyebrow stuff. We had our anniversary photo shoot, and her lipstick was awful. I sickened. I didn't want to kiss her or smash later. She's beautiful without all that mess. She uglifies when she puts it on. What can I do to make her stop? Lipstick and other crap does nothing. I'm angry and turned off. Dwayne in Seattle. Actually, a decent email set for the name. Uh, I, I yes. give him that. My, my man, when you keep on the show, don't cuss like that, please. I have to make them leave it out. Okay, your wife uh, is wearing, uh, quote, weird cream stuff. <laughs> that alone makes me laugh for other reasons. Weird cream stuff. Like, wow. Do you know somebody else I know? We're using those kind of language there. And <laughs> I hate. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I hate know. Lips, sticks, mask, and quote eyebrows. <laughs> Once again, you know somebody else I know with this kind of language. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my god! Okay, and it was a photo shoot. I guess you listen to all. I do agree with you, and Dwayne, in this regard. There are some women, Jay, I've been listening to people I've listened out there that. They should not wear makeup. Makeup, mascara, and foundation, and other crap, it does make them look worse. Because if you, you, you come out like it cakes up on their face and on their lips, and it cracks their lips, cracks their skin, and it just looks terrible. And sometimes it can be overdone. And I am not a lipstick myself, Dwayne, so I'm right there with you. I don't, I'm not a lipstick guy. I don't care for it. Because I don't want you to kiss me and get that crap on me, first of all. Okay, I, I'm more of a lip gloss guy. I, I can accept you with lip gloss, not lipstick. Cause uh, 
And the dark lipsticks are terrible. It makes you look like you're sick. Who wants to kiss, kiss a woman with black lips? Or brown lips or gray lips or whatever? Who, I don't want to kiss you with your kind of lips look like a, like a damn pearly box. I'm good. So, Dwayne, I understand. If your wife had li- 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 licorice or whatever that other black rust or copper lipstick, it's terrible, Dwayne. And she did look ugly fighter. I do agree. What you do to make her stop? Tell her ass. Dwayne be like, yo, baby, look. I do natural. All this, uh, quote, lipstick stuff you're putting on, we shouldn't be wearing it. You know, you look good without it. I like your natural state. It just does not do you any good. It makes you look like something you're not. So tell her that way. Ask her why she shouldn't get mad. If she does get mad, that's on her. It may be balanced for counseling and or divorce. I mean, my man, but I understand your sentiments. Cause I'm a guy like yourself, Dwayne, who does not like lipstick. So, yes, this, so yes, Dwayne, I agree with you, my man. Thank you for a decent email, but my man, Boss and Jay or Jay and Boss or something like that, my man. Uh, the name's right, please, sir. And uh, have a good day in Seattle. Don't get too high or sleepless in Seattle, my man. Yes, that's true. And, I, and um, you know, just like Bob said, I mean, you can easily just tell her, you know, in a nice way, like, you know, hey, you know what, I think that she'll look better just natural. And believe it or not, a lot of women actually appreciate that. You know, because sometimes women are also, you know, sometimes have those insecurities where they feel like they have to cake their faces up with makeup and stuff like that just to stay attractive for their man. But if their man is telling them, hey, you know what, I like you better natural, they're actually, majority of the time, going to appreciate that and be like, oh, wow, you know, I don't have to sit here and cake up my face with all this stuff. I can actually just, you know, <laughs> save some time and energy and just, you know, be myself. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that ladies should let themselves go, but it's nice. Men like to see ladies natural. So, I mean, I think that's really cool that he, 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 he feels that she's beautiful without all that exactly. makeup. Yes, actually. I, I think it's a very refreshing. And Dwayne, now what's up this? Now, she's going bald and has like braids on the middle of her head. So, wear a wig. Go with the wig. I mean, <laughs> too many women out here got braids on the middle of their damn head. It's not a track. We see yo yo five head. So please go with a wig. That's when the wigs are okay. It's so, alright, go with the wig. Or go with a natural look to cover up your baldness. Or try to help your hair grow again. Like this. I'm just giving you some little advice. But I'm six cent women with these uh braids or whatever they call them. Start in the middle of their damn forehead. Like for real. Like mix in a uh-huh. uh, wig, please. Step forward. So Jay, before we go to our bonus takes, what is your takes on the email today? Well, I definitely think as far as, you know, even though we usually do the the, the worst, I think as far as the, the best one, the, you know, the fact he got our names wrong is uh, from Dwayne. As far as the best, that was actually the most legible email where we didn't have to curse this person out. Um, as far as, oh gosh, as far as the worst, oh, this is going to be a talking. Oh my gosh. I... Definitely think the worst one, in my opinion, is the one that has a whole bunch of stuff going on, like in one email. South bitch. I had the nerve to sit up there and call it small beings instead of just saying. Oh, uh, you, you talking about uh, <laughs> my man? <laughs> what's his name? Uh, yeah, eighteen. 18, 18, 18, 18. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad too. I was gonna go with South bitch because this because of that email was this. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that was there. And that's Larry and Joe. I think the names made that bad for me. Like, you know, my name. Yeah, that's Joe. <laughs> that's Larry. Have you ever heard a radio host say, Where's the Lips Larry and Waterfront Joe here? What are you hearing? Absolutely man? not. What are you hearing? But yes, the best Dwayne, the worst is AT in uh, Havana. What's his name? Havana Harold in South Bitch. A.K. Miami. So, Jay, I wanted to go this horrible take that uh, I came across is that uh, I didn't know that being a mother is an excuse for not keeping your word on, on a date night or changing plans last minute when you have made plans 
within the top of the week and discussed it multiple occasions. I had no idea that, hey, because somebody's a mother first, that gives them an excuse to pull out of a date later, change plans because it's allegedly their son's birthday. They can take a child to a movie at 9 o'clock at night on a, on a Saturday. And your reason for put out of the date with this individual was the fact that it was your sister's birthday and you're a mother first. Is that not the worst take you ever heard and biggest crock of BS you heard in your life when it comes to a reason for not coming through on a date and keeping you worried? Yeah, so it definitely sounds like a lot of BS. I mean, you know, mother or not, you don't cancel some, you know, plans at the last minute with somebody. You know, especially... Um, if it's supposedly, you know, the child's birthday, I mean, I, you know, I'm a mother myself and, you know, if either one of my children have a birthday, I'm going to be planning that well in advance. So I'm not just going to figure out something to do that day and then cancel plans that I already had with someone. It's just out of respect. You know, she could have set aside a different time to take the child, uh, take her child to the, you know, to the movies instead of doing that literally at the last minute. I should have respected the time more. And you know as the individual that you're dating and has a busy lifestyle and all these shows up on the weekends, wouldn't you be more apt to, you know, keep your plans if you really like that person or whatever, as you say? Yes. You know? Absolutely. Especially you only have a, a, a certain limited amount of time before he's going to be out of town again. So, you want to yes. make that count, that time with that guy, would you tell your son, hey, We'll do this later or tomorrow. No, it's not your birthday. We'll do it tomorrow. I have plans. I want to see my friend. He's not here often. You know, if you really was wanting to do it, you would have made it right then. But to hide behind the fact that you're a mother first, why you don't go through with your plans, that's pretty low and low rate for me. That's, that's pretty terrible. This is one of the worst things I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, or, you know, she could have planned something earlier. But what kind of, you know, throws me off is, you know, if this was her child's birthday, why didn't she already have something planned ahead of time and then, you know, ration out her schedule for that day? And, you know, furthermore, she didn't say anything ahead of time either. She literally waited until the last minute. Exactly to say something so that's another thing where that's a red flag right there it sounds like to me that this individual uh, uh, knew they was about to get piped up and got scared of her about to ease way out and going to be people mm-hmm. you, know, you can't ease your way out of that by using your kid's birthday if that's even your kid's birthday to get out of you should tell somebody if you're going to pull out of a date you should tell them early as possible it should exactly. be an hour exactly. or a half before it starts. It should be hours way out before, out of respect. Because time is money and money is time. Mm-hmm. Especially dealing with an individual who is not, does not have more time to waste or to allocate. So, right, so let's exactly. Let's this, people. Do not allow people to, to BS your time because your time is money. That's, that's just time you cannot get back. So if somebody BS is your time, that's a, that's a sound to move on ASAP and be out of there because you do not want to get stuck with somebody who does not value you you or your time because your time is money. It's precious. You can't, you can't get it back if it's wasted. I hear Plain you. Sir. Definitely agree. And another bonus take I have that just, that just kind of came to me to, came to me just, just now and I gave this take uh, folks if you express yourself to a woman or a man whoever you like or date and they, they don't not respond to you in a timely manner do not kiss their butt to keep on hitting them up move on cause if they can't respect you mm-hmm. to answer your feelings towards them or how you feel towards them in a timely manner you should not deal with them and Jay love when people try to reach out to you after they deflected whatever you said to them or shunned you off to tr- but they, they didn't want to come, come around like I'm checking on you or I just want to reach out to you no because when we wanted to reach out to you originally you chose to blow it off and not feel 
for it to respond. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, in response to your non response, we'll not really respond to you anymore. Because that's just being holding your ground and being firm to your beliefs. Do not let people get away with BS and run you over. Do f up, foul, miss, and f you over. Please, my people, my people, the boss people, the boss, it's the bosses. Please have some backbone. It's enough for yourself and do not let people, people run you over. Because, Jay, too many people in this world today let people run them over in multiple facets, multiple ways, and they get burned for it every damn time. I'm sick of people getting burned by people who are full of crap and don't deserve their time or their effort or their energy. Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I kind of said it better myself. And yes, uh, me, if somebody blew me off when I was trying to reach out to them, I think I'm going to sit here and tolerate that with them trying to hit me up all of a sudden. Oh, bye. Like, they're not getting even a shred of my time at all, whatsoever. And I'm referencing a listener who just said, said sent me, he sent me a text, well, an email, rather, just saying that, hey, I, this chick I'm trying to reach out to her three times about getting with her. If she did not respond, she wants to call me and check on me like it's all good. No, sir. No, uh, he, he needs to just cut her off. Period. I put out the three times I want to be with you. You don't even respond. But you want to check on me? She got the text message. I don't know how he reached out to her if he called her or texted her. But, okay, let's say he texted her. Oh, she got that text message. She she got those messages. Exactly. So, to my, to my listener out there... He is in Lawrence, Kansas. Oh my God, where the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know. But, so I'm in Lawrence, Kansas. He didn't want to use his name, brother. Don't take her crap. I don't know what's in Lawrence, Kansas for you, but there's something better for you than that in Lawrence, Kansas, my man. It has to be wherever Lawrence, Kansas is, or even do long distance or something. You know, even if it's like just a couple states away or something. Just don't go you on know? POL for Tinder, my man. Because I don't know what's in Kansas. Don't, don't go on that. POL for Tinder. You might get chopped up and killed. I'm just saying. <laughs> or Tinder. Tag, <laughs> POL, Black Planet. Oh, yeah, tag my, is that, My space. <laughs> no. My man. Do people use my space? Your best day is Instagram, anymore? Twitter, or Snapchat. To find you somebody, mm-hmm. okay, my man? Take your chances with that. At least you know what. At least you have a handle and a, some pictures and some takes to go off of. You know, <laughs> Tinder and MySpace, uh, whatever it is, t- t- you don't have takes to go off of. You just have pictures and, and you never know who it might be. So, my man in Launch Kansas, do that. Tell that girl to F off and go to hell. You don't chill and you or nor your time to for chicken on you. My man, do even better. Block her number. She can't call you anymore. Let her know how I feel to be ignored when she can't reach you at all, body. Block! Get the blockage! And, Jay, the last mm-hmm. take I had, this is burning my soul. It's starting to get warm again outside. Now, seeing these horrific things I hate on windshields. These stupid, freaking windshield car shade things. Like, idiots! It's 90 degrees outside. I don't care if the shade is not on your car or on it. Your car gonna be hot when you get in your damn car. It's a waste of time to unfold this stupid thing, put in your windshield, like it's gonna make the car not be hot. It's a closed vehicle. It's gonna attract heat. It's gonna be hot. You open your car door, it's gonna be still. Ooh, a broke out. A stove hits you. Like, what are these things for? AutoZone or Rally Advance. Please stop some of these things. They're stupid. They make no Uh-oh. damn sense. They're bad takes. And I see people actually taking them out and putting them up. I'm like, what are you guys what are you doing? Because it don't help. It's going to be hot when you go to your car. Please stop. Oh, my God, Jay. These things annoy me so bad to no end. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to beat everybody's ass. I see with one. I want to beat their ass. Like, what are you, what are oh, you God. doing? Well, if it makes you feel any better, I do not own a sunshade. God, because I would just look at you like, Jay, I need to be on my show having a sunshade. <laughs> Ma'am, what's your deal? Oh, oh my right? God. And, uh, did Terry take, I know I got a lot of takes today. I'm sorry, people. A lot of takes today. I'm sorry. But a lot of people get themselves getting my nerves. 
those people who cover for their cars so they work, or cover their cars so they get home, why do you have a car cover for? Like, I don't understand that. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I noticed that, too. Down here a couple times, believe like, it or not. Like, man, yes. you work at Subway. What do you need a car cover for? <laughs> like, I see his cat, the Subway dude, go out there to cover up his car when he goes to the work. My man, you make this oh, one hour, if that. Oh, my gosh. And I don't get covered up your car. I mean, you go out in early in the morning to cover the uncovered, you go to work, they cover it, you go to work. What is it? Okay, exactly. That's extra time. You know what I mean? It's like for what though? What is, what what are they protecting what? it from? What, you know? What if it rains while you're driving, you're still getting water on it. What if a bird crap caps on your car while you're stoplight? You're still getting crap on your car. What about if it's pollen outside and sap? Mm-hmm. So I don't get what's again. Sunshades, car covers. Why are these what these are terrible takes? I don't <laughs> understand. I don't have that either. And I know this is the email segment, but I had this on my show today because I this has been bothering me for the last week since I finally talked to y'all in the email segment. So that's just all my shit. So I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Jay, I'm sorry. I had this on my show today. These it's okay. They're so bad. They're so bad. It's not it's, it's, it's bad. I mean, like, what? For real. So, whew, I feel better now. That's off my chest. I feel better. So I feel better. So, so folks. Okay. Okay. Out the break. It's about to go. Jesse Smith. We're going to talk some stuff before you blow the man stuff. We got some stuff for you out the break. We're going to kill it with the long report. So, this is emails. We are out. Jay and myself, we'll be back when we can. I can't promise you to be back next week, but I know we'll be back one of these weeks for your emails or whatever. Folks, the Boss Man Show. The new Boss Man Show is here. Boss Report out the break. <laughs> your photo video and voiceover needs check out the fine folks blu-ray productions they will take good care of you if you don't believe me you can see for yourself check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv the facebook page blueberry productions also a vimeo page a youtube page and it's blueberry b-l-u-b-e-r-r-y prod on twitter check them out today blueberry productions great people great work great service Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grinding NC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com. 
www.academicsandathletics.academicsandathletics.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Show. We've had Sean Devlin for the news. We've had Jay Monique with the emails and Tom Allen of Indiana. Now we go down to Memphis, Tennessee. My main man, the P. Diddy of karaoke, J.C. Smith, <laughs> who was at the Bisley game covering the Fags Forum against the Spurs. Bruh, what happened at the Grind House tonight, man? And are the Grizzlies gone fishing or are they going to stick around some more? Talk to me, bro. Hey, man, we grinded. Too. We couldn't grind no more, man. It's a wrap. The grids have officially gone fishing. Uh, we were hoping to, you know, extend this uh, series to seven games. I mean, you know, most grids fans, majority of grids fans knew that we were probably not going to win the series, but it always sucks to see it end on your home court. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, the grids, you know, provide another magical playoff run, winning two games. Um, and game four is probably the best grids playoff game we've ever seen uh, in grids history here, man. So, all in all, man, Grizz go down 103 to 96 to the Spurs tonight. And to tell the tape is really the same thing. That's really where the Grizz lost this game. Uh, Spurs have more, more heart, more one two in that second half, getting the loose balls, the rebounds, getting the second chance points, a uh, 17 9 advantage, and second chance points for the Spurs, man. So that's really where the Grizz lost the ball game. And before we get to the boss report, uh, what I want to ask you is, is this the official end of the gritty and grind era or the Grizzlies? Were they thinking about bringing back Vince Carter, Zach, and Tony Allen? Or is gritty and grind officially g- done after tonight's game at the grindhouse? Tonight was the finale. And that's the big reason why I had to be here tonight. Because, I've, you know, I've witnessed it all, man. I've seen the this team when they were winning only 20 games, you know, in the uh, late 2000s there. And then – you know, they're going to playoff run now, seven consecutive seasons. So I've seen it all, man, with this team. But I feel like tonight is the uh, end of an era uh, for the Grizzlies, man. I feel like either Zach or Tony, probably Tony Allen, will be on uh, for this team next year. And you're going to see – you already started to see the end of grit and grind this season but with Marcus Gasol shooting more three-pointers than he's ever shot in his career. You know, this team wants to get up and down, play up tempo, and shoot the three ball. And they're going to bring in more pieces, uh, you know, in the off season to allow to do that. So, yeah, tonight, tonight was the end of uh, uh, one, one of the best eras ever uh, here in Memphis Grizzly history, man. I hear that. So we hate to hear that about the Grizzlies. You know, it's always fun coming down to Memphis. I know I ain't been down to the Grizzlies game since November, but it's always a pleasure to come to Memphis, see the guys in Bill Street Blue do their thing. This is unfortunate that my favorite announcers now gone. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> man, leave, leave that man alone, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> man, you ain't right. Shout out to my guy Rick Trotter, man, wherever you are, man. That was Bob. That wasn't me. That was Bob's man. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm sorry. Man, I, always, I, always got, I always got Wolf on Rick, you know, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Leave that man alone, man. <laughs> I hear that. That was our Grizz recap. Here goes the boss report, folks. You've been waiting on it. It's time for it's here. It's the boss report. First story is going to throw you off already, right, bro. We have a Washington mother arrested after leaving baby in the front yard 
because drugs made her paranoid after the sun came out after a thunderstorm. You know what, man? You know I just got out of a very emotional game <laughs> at the front house, and you're going to throw that complicated-ass story out at the first story of the night. <laughs> Man, run that back, bro. Like, that had so many layers to it. Okay. So Washington mother arrested, okay, after leaving baby in the front yard because drugs made her paranoid. After the sun came out, after thunderstorm. <laughs> All right. Now, you know, I grew up in the suburbs, right? So I watched a lot of MTV. You know, I was, I was really big into alternative music. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you probably you probably not gonna know this, boss, but it was a uh, song called Black Hole Sun. And but the video was so trippy, right? Like you had to be like high. You no, know, like if you watched the video while you was high, you'd be blown out, right? So yeah. that's when you said when you said that story. That's what maybe you be thinking of that video, man. You had to you had to Google it to see exactly what I'm talking about, man. You would be, you know, if you if you was high or whatever, you would be tripping if you saw the video. It, it would freak you out, man. But maybe that's what she was, she was watching that old video. I think the name of the group is Soundgarden, if I'm not mistaken. You can Google okay. it, man. It's called Black Hole Sun. And, like, it would trip the hell out if you was, you know, if you was on that stuff, man. So maybe that's what she was watching and she was tripped out. And she just left the baby out there, man. Like, I'm providing, I'm providing, you know, legal d- defense counsel by all the sorts, man. I'm going to be their defense attorney. And I'm, I'm going to try to beyond reasonable doubt, you know what I'm saying, try to make you understand what, why these people did what they did, man. That's what I'm going to do tonight. No doubt. Florida police have to pay out twenty thousand dollars to a woman who was tased by officers because she called them honey and asked for some Popeyes to replenish herself after sex. Yeah, what the, what, why did I tase the poor woman, man? Because she called them honey. Yeah, and she said she wanted pop that. Come on, man. Maybe just tasing the woman there now. I mean, depending on what you look like, yeah, but but still though, no nah, man, it's America, Jack. You can't just be tasing tasing women. All she wanted was a uh, two piece, three piece of pop Exactly, they went crazy. Yeah, oh no, man. Hey, yeah, same on those, same on the officers, man. Well, Arizona teachers are arrested after finding herself on Snapchat while thirteen year old licks her doorbell. Ooh. 13? Yup. Snapchat? Snapchat. Snapchat, man. You know what? I got a Snapchat, but I don't know how to work it, dog. Like, I am Snapchat illiterate. Like, I have Me no too. idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to use it either. Yeah, but I heard they be getting loose on Snapchat. They be getting wild with it, man. They, they so, do, I been, we been missing out. Hey, I got to figure out how to work it, because I, I hear they be getting loose on I know. Up. Yeah, man, so, but shout out to this kid, man, 13 year old, you know what I'm saying? I think I was, I was 19 before, I, you know what I'm saying? Before I got my first case of uh, vagina, literally, you know what I'm saying? So, this kid, he, he's, a, he's ahead of the class, man, 13 years old, shout out to him. Exactly, exactly, and here we go. We have a Florida man arrested after breaking into a neighbor's home to steal underwear and leave creepy notes to let neighbor's wife know she can get the business quickly. Uh, Why well, it sound like a bad Tyler Perry uh, TV <laughs> show on uh, Oprah that work on? Yeah, man, that's what it sounds like, man. That's a Tyler Perry spinoff right there, bro. Yeah. yeah, man, like, yeah, nah, man, you don't be doing this. Let, let your, uh, your neighbor's wife know, you know what I'm saying? You got to be doing all that creepy stuff, you still out. Just put that bug in the air and see if she going cool, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, straight up yeah. tripping, tripping. You know? Yeah, this is a oh, messed up story, story, too. We got Michigan has passed a new law making it illegal for cops to Smash prostitutes can't smell the rings now. Cops can't do it no more. They used to do it legally. Now they can't no more. If you're a cop in Michigan, you cannot smash prostitutes anymore. Oh, no, no, that's what prostitutes are about. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, ma'am, I'm going to lock you up. No, officer, please don't. Okay, well, how are we supposed to work this out then? Like, I mean, that's the American way. Okay? Like, that's been going on for hundreds of years now. You can't take that away. 
doing it in Michigan. So uh, oh, Michigan's man. tripping already. Yeah, yeah, man. Like now, see, that's why I could never be a cop. Boss, I'll be the most crooked. Like think training day times ten. I'll be the most crooked cop in the world, man. I would too. I'll be taking, I'll be taking bribes. I'll be getting sexual favors. <laughs> like I will be, I will be Alonzo times ten, man. King Kong would literally have nothing on me, man. Hey, I'm right there with you, bro. I'm right there with you. And a Florida woman has gone viral. I she used her boyfriend's balls to apply her makeup. My left stroke just went viral. Viral. Kung Fu Kenny. So I caught the album. Um, well, wait, wait a minute. That's you, the man's balls? Yes, to apply like, her makeup. Real, real balls? Yes. The cat? No, they're, no, they're, they're the cat. Ouch. Um, to apply her makeup. Well, hey, that's, a, that's a new uh, definition to take it to the face right there. <laughs> That's a new way. That's a new way to put it. With the balls, though. Yep. Okay. All right. She must. Have, right. Okay. I'm trying to think. What type, what type of makeup would you apply, though? Like you putting on foundation? You putting on eyeliner? Like what you doing? She was using some, some Mac something. It was, it was Mac products. Something, man. It was Mac it, products. It, something. Yeah. Well, Michigan bank robber arrested. After being busted, after stopping for beer and masturbating near crime scene. Masturbating near crime scene. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to think how I can defend this guy here, man. Yeah, he was in Florida, right? Michigan. Bank robber. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Bank robber. He stopped so for beer and masturbating near the crime scene. Oh, no, I can't even, I can't even defend this one, man. If you're a bank robber, you, you're supposed to get in and get out, man. You ain't, you ain't supposed to let your stuff come out. You know what I'm saying? Man, who got time to go out there? You, you just robbed the bank. Exactly. Yeah, man, you're supposed to be on your way to Vegas, right? Out there jiggling your balls, man. You ain't, supposed to, ain't supposed to work like that. Exactly. And we have a Florida man arrested after stealing from a woman on disability and spending to get this nine thousand dollars to strip for the game for nighttime activities and toss him some salad. All right, okay. I heard the toss salad part. Okay, okay. Now, when what happened again? Now, a Florida man arrested after stealing okay. from a woman who's on a disability and spending nine thousand okay. dollars at the strip club to get some nighttime activity and a toss him some salad. Ah, okay. So he was tossing salad in the club. Yeah. Oh no, man! Not like you get head in the club. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't be eating no booty in the club, man. Like, no, man. Oh, bro, but nine thousand dollars. Nine thousand. Hey, man. If I'm spending nine thousand, man, I better be having a threesome, <laughs> foursome, like at the you know, King of Diamonds, like something better be going on, man. I'm gonna have a monthly yeah, package, damn it. Yeah. Yeah, and shout out, you know, we got new we got a new strip club here, uh V Live. V Live Memphis. I'm sure you've heard of it, boss. I have. It just opened up uh what two weekends ago, man. So they still going through the grand opening and everything now, man. So next time you come to the city, man, we gotta go check it out, man. See, see what V Live talking about. That's no doubt, no doubt. And bro, if you like hash browns, the story will make you sick. Southern style hash browns have been recalled for being contaminated with possible golf balls. How do golf balls get inside of hash browns being made at a factory? You know what? I, I, boss, I never hear about your stories that you report, but this is, I've heard, actually. <laughs> I, and I had the same reaction, like, huh? <laughs> like, how? What? Golf balls and hash browns, like, they're... <laughs> <laughs> Those don't mix. Yeah. Go into both of them? How's that even mix? I don't I don't understand that. Like what, what are we doing, man? Like are they making hash browns at the Titleist factory or something? Like it's like what's going on, man? <laughs> exactly. Like, come on. Like that's ridiculous. That's 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 talking about two things that don't mix. You know what I'm saying? I don't even get that one, man. How? 
luckily I don't like hash browns, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm lucky on that. Let's yeah, say man, I thought you about to say something like really disgusting. <laughs> right. I thought you about to say something really gross, man. Like, even but like, golf ball, that's weird, man. It's like, it's gross. It's weird. Very weird. Very weird. Yeah. It's weird, too. Florida woman arrested after Biden nail salon manager and threatened customers with a pen after her weave didn't get, get put in right. Oh, man. Oh, okay, man. You know, these women they don't play about their hair now. You know, you know, we we trip, we go to the barbershop, we trip, you know, if we gonna get the right cut or hairline pushback. Like mine got pushed back today. But uh, that's a whole other story, man. You know what I'm saying? But I got I got the LeBron Stephen A still hairline going right now, man. They got pushed back too far. But yeah, man, you know you don't play with a sister's hair, man. You know what I'm saying? There's consequences, repercussions, man, if her hair ain't right. So you know, things pop off at the beauty shop sometimes, man. Exactly. And we have a Illinois man arrest after going around putting bleach in convenience stores barbecue sauce as revenge for not being hired by them months earlier. Man, convenience, convenience store, man. You talking about Abu and them? You talking about Abu from, from the Simpsons? Yep. Man, what Abu what, what, what do this time, man? Well, he, he didn't hire an Illinois man, and he put barbecue, he put bleach in the barbecue sauce as revenge for not being hired. Damn, bleach is getting that barbecue sauce, man. <laughs> that's, that'll probably mess you up right there. Yeah, that, that, that'll kill you. You would think. <laughs> you would think, man. Like, I mean, if I'm going to get back, I don't want to kill you. You know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, like, put like, you know, egg lax, you know what I'm saying, like liquid egg lax or something like that in your drink, you know what I'm saying, make you just, you know, chill, chill yourself for, you know, a couple of days, you know what I'm saying, but I, don't, I ain't trying to kill you, though. Exactly. This story's going to trip you right, right here. Texas man arrested after being seen sticking a Exxon gas pill up his girlfriend's rectum at the Exxon drive-in market in Houston. Like, why are you doing that? What, what about it's that's messed, okay? It's messed up. It's messed up. But at the same time, boss, I, can, I think I can, I can defend it, man. Okay, all right, so the gas nozzle holes, right? Okay, of course, that's represent, you know, uh, a, a phallic symbol of, of a man's uh, junk, right? Yeah. Okay, so, like, and you let's say, you know, we talk about a symbol of a man's junk, and if you're drunk, you know, you're on that... They, they on that on that syrup down there, you know, on that on that purple sprite down there in Houston, man. So, you know, I can I can actually see that happening, man. And I'm surprised it hasn't happened more more often. You know what I'm saying? Like, you somebody just take that and you know insert it, <laughs> you know, like in, uh, in the girl's uh, you say it was in her rectum, right? Yeah, she she got she got out of the car, let him stick this up her rectum at the egg sign. Damn. Okay, so she was messed up too then. So she was high or you a drug sale. All right, like, first of all, it, it just got no disgusting. And then your thing going to be smelling like gas. You know, so, you know, gas smelling like gas. So, I mean, but like I said, you know, it's a long, you know, nozzle. You know, so, you know, I can see, I can, I can see somebody crazy uh, and drunk or high doing some stuff like that, huh? Well, you going to love this, right? This is why his is going to be even worse for you. Florida man arrested after being busted having a fifteen thousand dollar threesome in a shed at Home Depot after hours. Wow, Home Depot a shed fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> and a threesome. Man, those better be some of the baddest chicks alive, man. <laughs> a fifteen thousand dollars, dog. Man, I'm sorry. They better be straight up out of uh, Magic City or something, man. <laughs> Yo, why don't you go to one of them display sheds on Home Depot after hours to get the job done? Like, you pick an hotel? You'll spend $15,000 to pick an hotel? Maybe it was really comfortable. Maybe it was really comfortable or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, maybe you got a nice little little pull out, you know, uh, a bean bag chair. Like, I'm sure he, he probably got, he probably got a pop in this shit. He got a bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's probably real plush up in that shit, man. Well, 
Here we go. Got two more to go here. California man arrested after car surfing along California freeway with his butt in the wind. Butt neck in the wind. <laughs> Another story I'm, pretty, I'm sure it's probably happening quite often, man. Like, I've been tempted to do that in my younger days if I was, you know, partaking in some uh, – and some, and some and liquid be- uh, beverages there. Um, yeah, like, I can see that happening, man. You know, it's a nice day outside. You know, you just want to put your ass out the, uh, out the car, man, and don't just let the sun shine in. <laughs> <laughs> I see low green. Trick daddy in the wind. <laughs> and get That's all so bluffing, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's all so bluffing, man. <laughs> man. And the final one to on the ball support this week is this. Florida man's arrested and tasered after stealing nearly $1,000 worth of merchandise from Victoria's Secret to sell at the barbershop and church flea market. Oh, wait, now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. A Florida man, I know you got in the, the, the story of uh, Florida. A Florida man was arrested for stealing what now? Nearly $4,000 of merchandise from Victoria's Secret to sell at the barbershop and the church flea market. <laughs> Like, okay, so you telling them, why you going to the barbershop? You go, first you go to the beauty shop where a lot of women at. And then you tell them at a church, church flea market? Nah, like, yeah. this whole demographic, <laughs> this whole demographic was just off, man. Exactly. Who, who I are you targeting? Stuff. Yeah. You should target a salon, my man, and not a church at yeah. a barbershop. <laughs> yeah, man, like, all right, like, now I, now I can see if you in Atlanta. And you just you going to a gay barbershop or something like that, you know, but, you know, still, man. Nah, ain't those, those ain't the right spot to go to. <laughs> exactly. We should have done was find a local black woman's expo and whatever uh, local, local convention center there in Florida, and that's where you should have told it. Or oh, oh, the, the local strip strip clubs, or meet the women as that's they go to work. That too. That'll work too. Man, hell, a terrible business plan. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, he didn't do too good in economic class. <laughs> nah, nah, at all. So, bro, boy, close up, bro. What is your take on this box support, man? Hey, my take is, man, grit grind, man. We feeling grizzly, man. We gonna be back next year, man. We gonna go out again the first round <laughs> next year at <laughs> the same time. But nah, man, um... Nah, ball support is always, man, coming strong with it, man. The stories, I'm finally happy that I, I know a story that, you, that you're talking about. I already knew about it. You know what I'm saying? That's very rare. Cause a lot of these stories, man, you find under a rock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somewhere in Planet Krypton, you find these stories under a rock and you report them, man. But I knew about one of them, man. So I feel like, I feel like I'm finally on your level now, man. Hey, bro, let me tell you, tonight... I left 24 stories on the cutting room floor that I found. That's crazy. And I went about crazy. 14 tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> think about that. So, I tell That's you, man. Up, man. I tell you, this, this year's report has been so layered, man. Stories have been so layered. I don't still understand. It, man, these stories are like so layered and complex. They're like the Andre 3000 of Boston Court stories tonight, man. Like, you guys. You, you got you got to dig deep to understand what what these stories were coming from, man. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's complex, like three thousand, man. And, and exactly. Before you go, bro, you know the Cowboys got them a pass rusher, Taco Charles, Taco, Michigan. Taco, Taco me. Taco me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hope like that we got a hit on these on these first round picks, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm familiar with Taco Charles, and so I hope you know day one he can be an impact player, man. And then we gotta go ahead and fill. Up some more defensive needs in the second and third rounds coming up this weekend, man. So, man, how about the Cowboys? And week 10, Cowboys in Atlanta. You got bro. I'm there. I know you coming over Boss. that, right? <laughs> Boss, stay it up. Stay it up for me. I'm, I'm coming, man. Go on, go on. Get the, the room ready, man. Get the girls, man. Like, we're going to be down there in the A cutting up, bro. <laughs> bro, you have to come in on Friday night, man. Gotta come on Good. Friday night. I, I, know, I know you got quick on Saturday. You gotta come in on that Friday night, Friday, oh, bro. Man, you gotta come I'm on that Friday. I'll get somebody fill in. I'll get somebody fill in for me and click, baby. I'm gonna be in the A the whole weekend. Friday this night. This Cowboys Saturday, weekend night. gonna be off the chain. Let's do it, man. They already Let's planned it, it already. It's April, okay? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. No doubt. Well, 
folks, that's JC Smith. This is the boss man. This is the boss man, the boss man, Radio Network, boss man, show.com. We are out. And if you don't know, now you know, you know. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you.